Yo guys, what is going on? It is your girl Randy Moby here and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be speaking to you. It's kind of like a talk kind of video. I'm going to be speaking to you about a fear that I suffer with and I'm sure a lot of people suffer with, but a lot of people are unknown of the name and what it's all about and stuff like that and how to get help. And I'm going to be telling you guys how to get help, how to go about it, how to overcome your fear, how to... I hear the noise. How to tell people about your fear and how to, you know, how to manage your fear. I'm gonna go through my experiences and everything that I suffer with with this fear. And before I get on with this, I wanna tell you all that there's no triggers in this apart from me speaking. I'm not gonna be showing you any pictures of vomit. I'm not gonna be doing, showing any things. I'm just gonna be telling you my experiences, my exposures to this and where it came from and how to deal with it. So if any of you guys are suffering with it, then you know you can deal with it as well. But I need to make you all aware of there's no triggers because that's one thing that I don't want you to do is watch this, you're scared of it, and you know you get a trigger off it. But I'm gonna be speaking about a metrophobia. I think I'm saying that right. A metrophobia, metrophobia, something like that. But it's when you've got a fear of being sick, seeing sick, someone else being sick, you've got a fear of the word sick or you know the vomit and stuff like that. You know, that's what it's about. Now, people get it in loads of different ways. People are scared of other people being sick. People are scared of being sick themselves. And people are, you know, can be scared of just the word being sick, of the pictures and seeing it. But I'm scared of being sick, seeing sick, someone else being sick, being ill, all that kind of things. And it's making me ill, being afraid of being ill, if that makes any sense whatsoever. I find it really hard to explain to you throughout this video. One, because I can literally not explain how a metrophobia works. I can explain to anyone. People have asked me what, how, it, they tell me how you was scared of being sick. It's just one of the natural things. But to me, it's not natural. To me, it's something that is not meant to be coming out of your mouth. No, nothing is meant to come out of your mouth. It's just one of them things that just I can't deal with. I get panic attacks, I get anxiety, depression. I freak out guys, I literally run for miles if I see someone being sick. It's just so hard to deal with. It's ruining friendship, relationship, my life, my socializing, my youth. I'm 20 years, 20 years of age guys and I've been, I don't go to parties, I don't have, I, I do have friends but I don't go out and meet new people. I don't do stuff because I'm afraid that I'm going to be ill or I'm going to be see someone being ill. <sighs> and a lot of the time, when you have a metrophobia, you get it because you've had bad experience of being sick or you've seen bad stuff while being sick and stuff like that. But personally, I've never had bad experience of being sick. As a kid, I was always... If I was ill, I had tons like this. I was never... I've ne never had the bug, I obviously I did have the bug, but I wasn't, I never had enough to be afraid of it. I had it about two times as a child, and you know, that was it. I was sick, that was it. There was, I never died, that's the thing, I never died, so I never had any experience, bad experiences of being sick. I've never had any bad experiences of people around me being sick. It's just something that I've grown on that is just making me be afraid of being sick and I really don't understand what it is and I try to tell the therapist, I try to tell doctors that there's no reason for me to be afraid of this but it's just still there, it's just still in my mind, it's still there and it's friggin hard to deal with and live with. Trust me, if you live with this phobia, you understand how hard it is to actually live with it. I'm trying to explain to people how scary and hard it is going through that moment. Um, it all, to be honest with you, I've, I've always been scared of sick but it all as a kid, going through school, high school, whatever you want to call it, you know, comprehensive, I was always, I always hid the fear of being sick, so I never had it that bad. I was never the type of person to go into a room when someone's being sick. You know, I've always stayed away from people who are being sick, but I've never, you know, been scared of it. I've been, like my friends used to be sick and I used to stay there with them. I was never afraid, afraid of it. I still had that afraid moment, but I never, not like I do now. Um, so, you know, as a child, growing up, it was there, but I never really done anything. I never really felt it or it never really stopped me living my life. Um, until about three years ago, I had the bug and I caught the bug off someone and it killed me. It friggin' hurt. Now, I was afraid of being sick before this. Now, please, please, please listen when I say this. Before I had the bug, I was petrified of being sick, okay? 
But at that moment when I had the bug, my fear went over the top. So I was about here. Say this is the graph, okay? I was about here before I had the bug. I could deal with it. I could get over it. I never used to have panic attacks. I wasn't scared of it. I wasn't scared to go out. Then I had the bug. And my fear went from here to here, to the top as I could possibly go to the point of breaking point. I had that bug for 24 hours. The whole 24 hours, I had a non-stop panic attacks. I thought I was going to literally die, guys. From that day, two years ago, I have not eaten properly. I have not slept properly. I have not gone out. I have not... I've, I've done stuff that I really shouldn't be doing because of this phobia. For example, I used to, I don't do this anymore because, you know, I know how bad it is, but I used to literally get a whole bottle of bleach and use that every single day. So I used to go for one bottle of bleach a day, washing my hands and my legs and the rest of my body in the shower. But, go, but you know when you go to the toilet, you normally use soap and that's it, you're done, you're water. I used to generally use bleach to wash my hands every single day to the point where my hands were physically bleeding because of the bleach. It was bad. No matter what I'd done, I thought I was going to get ill. Just no matter what. Someone burps around me, coughs, pales, tired, ill, says they feel ill. My mind goes, poof, they're going to be sick. I'm real, seriously. For example, my boyfriend, he says, oh, I don't feel well. I'm like, where, why don't you feel well? Where don't you feel well? He's like, you know, I don't know, I've got a bad head, bad throat. You know, I feel achy and I'm like, do you feel sick? The main thing is, do you have a st bad stomach and do you feel sick? If he says yes, my mind... I'm just like, oh my god, he's got the bug. I try to make up excuses that he's just hungry or he just needs to relax and rest and all that kind of stuff. Really, in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh my god, he's got the bug. I'm going to be ill. He's going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. Oh my god, what am I going to do? But it's just one of the things we've got to deal with. Thankfully, he has never had the bug since he's been with me. I mean, we've been together for four years. He's been sick a good couple of times, but he's never had the bug. Thank god. So, yeah, that's one thing I'm scared of is when it comes to people coughing and stuff like that. It also got to the point where I was too scared to go out. I go to town and I get really bad anxiety. I was seeing people in town and I was like, oh my God, what happens if they got the bug? I couldn't, I was too scared to touch anything when I go out just in case they, they touched it. Everywhere I looked, I could just see germs of being sick and people being sick. I could just see germs of the bug everywhere and I was petrified of everything. Everything I literally done, I was petrified. I was too scared to touch my face if I ever went out. And when I did go out and I accidentally touched my face, I'd freak out. I'd have to go wash my whole entire face and my hand just in case I got sick of it. And it was so bad, guys, to the point where I literally lost everyone apart from my family and my boyfriend. I lost everyone around me. I pushed them away because I was too scared to go out and face the fact that if I'm ill, I'm ill. I was too scared to do that. I've also stopped, I also stopped eating pretty much anything that I could possibly eat. It got to the point where I was nearly hospitalized because of how bad I was, because I wasn't eating. I was classed, going underclassed as anorexia because I'm not, I wouldn't say anorexia, but I was going classed as an eating disorder because of this fear. I was nearly, literally put in a special hospital for not eating because of how bad I was. I had to get force fed to eat get the fear of not eating in out of me. Um, thankfully, thanks to my family and my boyfriend, I'm over that now, but it just got that bad, guys, that everything I ate, I just thought of food poisoning or being sick. It was so bad. I still get it now. Like, I, when I eat, like, I spend money on a takeaway. I eat about two things, and that's it. I can't eat no more because I feel sick after eating it, and I think that I've got instantly got food poisoning off it, or they've been sick, and then they've made their food. And, yeah, whenever I cook, I've got to literally burn the food. Even bacon, I can't eat bacon. I gotta burn the bacon. I gotta burn every single bit of meat that I have, and I make sure every single person who is around me checks that food to make sure that it's cooked as well. Like that was before and after the point where I could not eat. Even now, I literally eat about two meals a day when I'm meant to be eating at least three to four meals a day because of this fear. And I'm generally starving. I really want to eat. I'm really, really hungry, but I literally cannot do it without feeling sick or without the fear of that I'm going to be ill. And I try my best to overcome and I try my best to just eat and I, I just can't. So yeah, that's another bad thing about it is that my mind just explodes when it comes to eating. 
You know what? This is actually turning out into a really bad video because I sound like I'm literally going through a mental problem, which it's just a phobia and I need to get over that phobia. But if I'm making this to a, make sure that everyone, if anyone is suffering with this, go and get help because you don't want to end up like I was. It was so bad. Do not wash your hands with bleach. No matter what you do, do not wash your hands with bleach. Another experience I had, a fun one actually, I was in Cardiff in October with my boyfriend and we was walking to the shop and I seen this guy, now he was like a homeless guy but he was either drunk or on drugs but he was doing something, he was like on something, he wasn't right. So I, um, I was walking past him and he coughed and spat. I looked at him, I went white. I knew from that moment I need to get out of here, he is going to be sick, I need to move now. I literally fast walked for about two minutes to a safe place, what I thought was a safe place. I turned back, looked at him and as soon as I turned around and looked at him, he violently was sick everywhere. I freaked, I legged it to McDonald's, I, I look back right now and I was like, I'm actually like laughing but not McDonald's, Tesco, I legged it to Tesco. I'm laughing actually thinking about it now, but at the time it was so bad. I got into Tesco and I literally got to, I think it was the milk aisle, and I just stood there and I cried my eyes out. I was petrified. I thought, this is what was going through my head, okay? So people ask me what's going through your head when you have a panic attack. This is what was going through my head at this time. I thought he'd done it on purpose. I thought he knew that I was scared of it and I thought he knew that I was going to freak out if he was sick so I thought he'd done it on purpose. I thought that I was going to get ill from being so far away but him still being sick. I thought that I was going to get whatever he had was going to make me sick as well. I thought that because he's been sick everyone else around me is just going to magically start being sick. It was so bad guys. I cried for about 10 minutes in Tesco. I had people looking at me stupid when I'm standing there hyperventilating trying to calm myself down with my boyfriend and I just could not breathe and could not do anything. He wanted to take me outside the fresh air but I couldn't because I knew that he was out there and if I went out there he was going to be sick again and it was just so bad. It was literally so bad but I find it so funny now looking back at it guys. I went back to the hotel room and I stayed up all night. I literally sat there all night awake and I stared at my boyfriend to make sure he didn't wake up and was sick because if he woke up and was sick I could have left the room I had time to leave the room while he was like waking up and heaving or whatever but I literally sat there the whole night staring at him just making sure he did not wake up one inch to be sick another funny one as well guys is it literally just happened this a couple of weeks um, we went to a caravan with me and my boyfriend and two of our friends and this is probably the most calmest moment of my life of being sick I'm never sick Okay, I'm literally never, never, never sick. The only time I'm sick is if I'm literally ill or I, I can't help it. I'm never sick, okay? Even when I drink, I'm not sick. This weekend, I walked for the caravan and as soon as I walked for the caravan, there was a bucket, you know the dish buckets? There was a bucket and I said, okay, first things first, I gotta hide this. I'm so sorry, they looked at me stupid, but I had to hide this bucket because every time I looked at it, I represented it with being sick and I had to move it so I could enjoy myself. So I put it away, I hid it. Obviously, you know, I knew it, told everyone where I hid it just in case, but I like, you know, I hid And um, I was like, okay, if anyone's gonna be sick, just be sick in the toilet. Do not be sick in this bucket because it's just gonna make me worse. The night went by, we was drinking, I was drinking, um, and I woke up in the morning and looked to the side of me and there was a bucket, the bucket that I hid with second. And I was like, who the hell has been sick in a bucket and put it to the side of me. I thought that everyone done it just for a laugh. I thought they wasn't me. I was like, oh my God, what the hell's going on? I literally shook my boyfriend awake about four o'clock in the morning. I was like, who's been sick? Why is this sick next to me? And he was like, it was you, you've been sick. And I was like, no, I haven't. I remember, I remember being sick. And he was like, no, you were sick. I was like, no, no, you're lying. You're lying to me. So I went into the um, living room and my friends was awake and I was like, Sick. And it was like, it was you. And I was, it was like, yep, it was you. And I was like, oh my god. I cannot remember being sick. But if I did, then it must have been okay because I'm still alive and I'm so okay. But I'm, oh my god. Guys, I freaked the hell out, okay, inside. I could show it. I don't like showing my fear in front of people that I'm scared of showing stuff in front of. Like, I'm not scared of showing my fear in front of my friends, but I'm scared of showing them my fear to the point where I'm having panic attacks. I've never had a panic attack in front of anyone apart from my boyfriend. I hold it in inside and I'm freaking out inside, but really, I just wanna break and I just wanna freak out, but I just can't. And I literally was like, oh my God, but inside I was freaking the hell out. So yeah, that was a funny one. <laughs> that was actually a funny one, guys. Come on, like seriously, I can't remember being sick, but I'm still alive, so I was okay. That's the main thing you have to remember when you are sick. You're gonna be okay. 
you're not gonna die. There is no reason for you to think that you're gonna die. You're gonna be totally fine. You're not gonna like throw up and you're not gonna never stop. That's my fear, I think, is that I'm gonna be sick and I'm never gonna stop. I can't breathe, but I'm it's fine. Like seriously, it's fine, but I can't even tell myself it's fine. So the main thing as well, guys, you don't wanna do when you have this fear is not tell anyone about it. Went on for so long not telling anyone about it to the point where it got so bad. I wake up pretty much every single night having a panic attack just in case I'm sick. I get in the car and I secretly freak out because I feel sick just because I get bad like sm I get bad motion sickness but not to the point where I'm sick but I do get it to the point where I'm really sick and I freak out big time in the car and you know I hide that as well I hide the fact that I'm scared of everything that involves being ill I'm scared of going out drinking I'm scared of partying I'm scared of swimming I'm scared of kids I'm scared of going places that involve kids and stuff like that it was so bad. Literally, my cousin had a party not so long ago and she wanted me to do face painting and I was... Guys, I spent hundreds of money getting all... Well, not hundreds, I spent about £50 getting all this face paint and all these glitter tattoos and all these other little things to do it. And I literally had to chicken out the last minute because as I sat there thinking, I was like, Oh my God, what happens if one of these kids have got the bug? One of these kids are going to be sick. What happens then? You know, what What do I do? And I was so scared I had to chicken out, guys. I had to chicken out on my own cousin's party because I thought that I'm going to get ill if I go. It is so bad. So, so bad. But the worst thing to do is hide it from people because if you hide it from people, people can't help. I've told the doctor. The doctor helped me. She sent me to a therapist and personally, it didn't help one bit. Um, I went to a another... He's like a therapist kind of person, I don't know what you call these, but they also didn't help as well. I've been to the doctors a couple of times for it, but all they give me is anti-sickness tablets, which make me just really drowsy, so I can't take them during the day. Um, I can only take them during the night, but it just knocks me off the count, and I like being alert during the night, just in case I do wake up and be sick. Um, it's got to the point, guys, where I'm literally asking people, have you got the bug before I go out with them, or have you got the bug before I go like places with them? do stuff with them. I'm Now I'm telling you guys and how bad it actually is. I'm realizing how much, how pathetic I actually sound and how bad it actually is. But it is so bad to live with this phobia. Be afraid of doing anything that a real 20 year old should do. Be afraid, afraid to have friends, being afraid to be in love, being afraid to do stuff because everything involves being sick. But it doesn't, nothing involves being sick. You're only sick if you need to be. You're only sick if there's something in your body that needs to get out of your body. And that's what I can't tell myself. I can't tell myself that I'm going to be okay if I'm sick. I'm going to be okay if someone else is sick around me. I'm literally so bad, guys. But trust me when I say this, guys. It helps so much to actually tell your friends how much, how bad it is. I've not told my friends how bad my emetrophobia is. I've told my boyfriend. I've told my mom. I've told the daughter. I've told everyone. But I've never actually told my friends how bad I have this because I don't want to sound dramatic, I don't want to sound like a tension seeker, but it really does help to tell people and for people to understand how scared you are. But I just can't tell my friends how bad it is, so I'm hoping to see this video and be like, oh my god, she's actually a freak, what are we doing with her? She's scared of being sick, like seriously, that's what my mind does, and like, you know, if I tell this person, they're gonna be like, what the freaking hell are you on about, you're scared of being sick, what the hell, it's so bad, it is so bad, like, I've suffered with really bad anxiety due to this, which makes me feel sick anyway. The other day, this is another dumb one which I really don't understand, is the other day I had a bottle of pop like this, I put it into the fridge, realized that it ch touched a packet of friggin' bacon, I took it out, drunk it, then realized that this bottle, well not this one, but the bottle had had contact with raw meat. I thought I was going to friggin' die, guys. I wanted to rinse my whole body out with bleach, guys. My hands, I literally just scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed. I went upstairs and I took the bottle of my boyfriend and I went and put it in a glass and like literally scrubbed everything that touched the bottle and we argued like hell that night and he did say sorry. He he does understand my phobia and he does understand when I freak out I do not mean it. I'm just doing it because my mind tells me different but at that moment of time he was like why are you doing this? What is your problem? Why are you scared of this thing? There's nothing to be scared of. You're not going to get ill off a plastic bottle touching bacon. But at the time, my mind was like, that has just touched raw meat. Raw meat equals ill. Raw meat equals spew. Raw meat equals food poisoning. The germs, the bacteria. Guys, the, the raw bacon wasn't even open. It was still in the packet closed, but my mind just could not deal with that moment. I just 
when the panic sets in and you start having a panic attack and you start realizing like your brain starts telling you all these different things is gonna happen because of this phobia and it's just so hard like I suffer with I don't suffer but I probably have four panic attacks a day because of this phobia two are probably silent panic attacks but I'm just in my own shell freaking the fuck out and I can't tell anyone and the other panic attack is probably when I'm telling people to you're going to die if you eat that or you're going to be ill if you eat and I've pushed so many people away because of this but it's just so hard to and for people to understand unless you actually go into this phobia on how hard it is to you know live with this phobia and go through this phobia and be around people when you're suffering with this damn phobia another thing to never say to someone who's got a metrophobia it's all in your head we know it's in our head we know it's like something in the back of our brain telling us to like you're going to die you're going to be ill you're going I never do nothing, I don't know, but you're not gonna be the, you're not gonna stop or whatever the, whatever it is, seriously, whatever it is telling yourself in your head, it's just gonna die or whatever. We know it's in our head, but we just can't do nothing about it, we can't tell ourselves that we're not gonna die, we're not gonna, we're gonna be fine, we can't tell ourselves that because there's this thing in our head that just sees everything as gyms, it just sees everything as you're gonna be dying, be sick. It is so hard, and trying to explain to someone when you're having that moment, when you're having that panic attack, why are you going through that? Why what's happening? It's like the hardest thing ever. If you ever are around someone who's having a metrophobia a panic attack, who's been sick or has been around someone who's been sick and they're having a panic attack, never ask them to try and explain it. Just tell them you're going to be okay. Just calm them down first before you do anything else. Just Please just tell them that you're going to be absolutely fine and you're going to be totally alive in the next 10 seconds. You're going to be totally fine. Because the worst thing you can do is start shouting at them and telling them you just stop and stuff like that. You're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be fine. Just stop. Don't tell them to stop. You need to be there for them and just try and listen to them. Because I can just, I can just not make this video to explain to you guys how bad it is having a metrophobia. Imagine if I was having a panic attack right now and I had to explain to you why I'm having a panic attack and why I'm going through this. It's so hard. Like seriously, like so freaking hard. stupidly hard actually. And. The worst thing is, is when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're having a panic attack and everyone is sleeping and you feel bad if they wake, you wake them up just to tell them that you're scared of being sick. You see your friend online and you just really want to inbox them and tell them, please help me, I'm having a really bad meltdown at the, at the minute and I just really need someone to tell me it's okay but you don't want to inbox them because you sound like a freak if you tell them that I need someone to tell me I'm okay because I'm not going to be sick. You know, it's it's so hard to just inbox someone and ask them for help when you don't know yourself, don't know how to say it to them that you need help and you need someone to speak to. And there's only so much that someone can help you before actually losing control. And there's so much you can help yourself before losing control. And I've learned that. I've learned for a fact that it's so easy to lose control but so hard to control yourself. The last few weeks, the last month, I've actually overcome half the fear of this fear. And the main reason because of that is I put my friends first, and I put my life first, I put my family first, or I put this phobia first. I used to put the phobia first, and I used to think of all the consequences in that one thing. Like if I went swimming, I used to think of all the consequences of going swimming just in case there was someone in the pool who had the bug. Now I see it as I'm gonna go and enjoy myself, I'm gonna go and not worry, I'm gonna go and have fun, I'm gonna go and be safe. I'm gonna go and spend time with my friends and family and I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be sick. I'm not gonna see anyone else being sick. I've been swimming for the first time ever this month in that last month ages in year because of this phobia. I've been out. I've been to a places that I should well I there's like a ninety percent chance that I will get the bug from going to these places but I've still gone because I put myself first. I put my friends first I put my fear behind me and it's helped a lot because now I don't think about the things like if I'm on my own I'm going out then yeah I will think about these things but if I'm with friends and family I really don't I don't even know if I'm gonna upload this video because it's just me rambling on but me trying to explain how bad metrophobia is and if you ever yeah I had to make this video so if anyone is suffering with metrophobia or if you know anyone who is suffering with the fear of being sick or metrophobia then please share this video to them because they will understand what I'm speaking about and they will hopefully get some help from this video to go and tell someone that they're suffering with this 
I lived for so long without telling him. I lived for so long without even knowing about this fear. I thought I was just being stupid and I was scared of being sick. Until I found out that it is an actual fear, it is an actual mental health fear that you can actually be afraid that much to the point where you're panicking every single second of the day of being sick. You know, if you do, as I said, counter any one of your friends that I've got this fear and they start having a panic attack, tell them they're gonna be okay be with them calm them down until they're over and done with and if your friend inboxes you in the middle of the night who is suffering with this fear and says hey are you awake can we talk ask them if they're okay ask them if they want to chat ask them if there's anything on their mind try and get it out to them because I can tell you 20% of the time if they're inboxing you at stupid o'clock of the night and they just woke up for then there's probably 20% chance that they just woke up from having a panic attack and they need your help but they're too scared to ask. I hope you like this video, it's, I really, as I said, I don't know if I'm going to upload this, just me rambling on, but I hope you do like this video. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, hit that notification button, turn on your notifications, hit that like button, hit that dislike button if you dislike this video. Let me know if you have any questions about metrophobia and I will try my best to answer it as 100% truthfully as I possibly can. Maybe I'll do another Q&A on a metrophobia if you guys want me to, if I, have a, if I have a certain amount of questions about this, but I don't know, I'll get there when I get there, but yeah. My energy level has now gone from up there to down here because it gives me so much energy to actually try and explain to you about this. It takes up so much energy. I hope you like, and if you do suffer with this, make sure you do not wash your hands at bleach because your hands will get messed up. Your hands will get messed up, guys. Do not starve yourself, and I hope you all have a good day. I love every single one of you. Keep smiling. You're all friggin' beautiful, no matter what anyone says, and you're all important in someone else's mind. Go get help. Tell someone about it. Tell your friends. Get them to help you. Get someone to understand and listen to you. If they do not understand and listen to you, they're not your real friends. I love you all. Peace. Have a good night. That didn't go as planned. Peace.